five pulled back. I mean, Palantir's down 8%. Talk about still the potential move up to $20, which is not looking good. It's going to be objective here. And if so, where will we move? Because 12, 11, 10 are all looking feasible. We're going to also cover if I'm going to be buying this thing long term and what levels and the cash secured put strategy that I plan to deploy to make a couple thousand dollars a month on this and hopefully fill down at 11 bucks. If you guys don't know who I am, my name is Peter DiCarlo. I've been a trader for full time eight years and we run a community with over 11,000 members. You guys can check us out in the description. All of our trading resources are over there completely for free. And my goal is just to make trading simple, effective, and stress free. The whole industry is over mystified, over hyped, and made to seem like it's so hard to understand. But it's just because the people who are telling you and teaching you don't understand the market enough to simplify it. So check out all of our resources. They're down in the description. Yesterday, we were talking about the two major blocks of volume. You can see in the past year on the volume profile, which is on the right side of your screen, the major areas of volume that we have is from $18, I'm sorry, from $17 down to $14, and then all the way down here from $9 down to $7. If you want an in-depth look on how to use the volume profile, go to the Discord community and click on the courses and seminar section, and you can take our technical analysis mastery course. It's one of the best technical analysis courses that you guys will find that will actually teach you how to use multiple indicators all together in conjunction. But essentially a normal volume bar at the bottom of your screen would show us how much money or how many shares is coming in or out of the stock every day, which is obviously important, but it's not gonna show us over time where they're going in and out. And we need to be trading with institutional investors, AKA with volume, because we need other people to move the market. We can't do anything, we're helpless. We need them to move the market with us. Honestly, whales need other whales to move the market. And so what tends to happen is in these thin areas of volume, for instance, from $14 down to nine, and in this thin area of volume from 17 up to 20, what will tend to happen is these moves in thin areas of volume will be very aggressive and usually not last. It'll happen very quickly for the stock to pull right back down through that thin area of volume as it did to move up, right? So just as quickly as we filled this volume to the upside, three weeks and 74% return, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, objectively, we could easily crater just as fast. And so for me, looking at Palantir, we have this sell-off from the top. We were in able to push up over 1550, which was big today. We topped out, pulled all the way back, closed at low of day. And now we have this bear flag that's forming and it looks like if we give up 14 bucks, which is a big support, you guys remember last week we were selling cash secured puts there, making a killing. If we give this up, we're dropping to at least 12. 12, there's a good little support level. You can see here, small area of volume. The 200 SMA could catch up to it. But overall, I think that we're going to go to 12 and potentially down to 11 or 10. Now, does that mean I'm going to short this or that I'm ultimately going to get some puts? No, implied volatility is too high for me to get directional puts. But what I will probably do is sell call credit spreads all along the way using the 22 SMA as my guide down till about $11.31. Or what I might start doing is selling cash secured puts far out of the money, like 12, 11, 10. And then hopefully over the next couple of months or make a couple thousand dollars a month off of premiums if it doesn't hit my strike. And then hopefully I'll build a position around $11.50. And then from there, we will hopefully bounce off the 200 SMA somewhere around 11. And I can take profits at 14, set a stop down at 987. That'll give me a nice three to one RVR almost. But if you're a long-term investor, don't worry. There is a gap down at $8. And I wouldn't be surprised if we drop down to $8. But you have to understand that if you really are a long-term investor and you're not just like, somebody who thinks they are or they bought it and now it's dying and you're like forced to be a long-term investor. If you really are a long-term investor in this, you don't care, right? It can, it can go to $8. You're, you're worrying about how, where it is in five years from now, right? But if you are a trader, you should be watching these volume levels. I'm telling you, if we snap 14, we're going to free fall overnight. I wouldn't be surprised if we gap down five, 10%. And at that point, just drain our way down to $10, especially when the rest of the market's looking pretty weak, right? Like you, you have SPY breaking 440, moving to 430. If it breaks 430, we're going to 415 because of how low the volume is. QQQ, same situation. Break 360, we're going down to 320. 
looking at tesla break 230 we're going to 200 and with a lot of things testing supports if these levels start to give out it's like pulling the bottom blocks out of the jenga tower it's just all gonna topple so i hope this video helped guys thanks for all the support comment any tickers you guys want me to go over and check out our discord community all our free training resources are over there peace